I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed today and excited to be bringing God's word to you. I'm excited because God has given me his word for you. Praise God. And as we go into this broadcast, listen, hey, the month of August is coming to an end. And let me tell you, the truth is going to come to an end on a good note. Praise God. You, you are going to be excited. You are going to receive his word into your heart. That's what he gives to me. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Praise God. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Are you ready to call forth today's daily bread? Are you ready? Join your faith with mine right now as we release it and say with me, say, Father, I receive right now my daily bread. It's coming to me now in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Listen, are you ready to receive from God? Why will I receive from God? Because He loves me. He loves me. And He's done everything. I wish I can make that sound louder in your heart. I wish I can open you up and just put this truth and, and put it in, in, deep into your heart and connect it to every vein of your body. So as blood is pumping, this, this knowledge is just pumping into your whole being. Praise God. Yes! Do you know how much He loves you? And I told you it's too late for Him not to love you. It's too late. Too late. He has finished everything. He's finished everything. Do you know the Bible tells us that he has a book that he's written and it's called the book of life. In that book, mind you, he's not writing the book now. Oh, some of you think today, oh, that God is writing all the wrongs that I'm doing. Some of you think, oh, as I'm doing the wrong things, angels are busy following me. Ah, he lied today. At 1.42 p.m. 023 seconds on the 29th of August, he told a lie. And this is the lie that he told. They asked him if he knew about this and he said no. But it is a lie because we saw when... I think that's what the angels are doing with you. Listen, they don't have a pen with them. They don't have empty sheets with them. Do they have books with them? Yes, they do. What is written in the books? The book has already been written. It is not about to be written. Read the scriptures. The Bible said the book of life was written from the foundation of the world. Yes, it was written from the foundation of the world. Now, now, I know because of misunderstanding, you know, and, and it's so bad. The day I realized this, I, I, I put my hand on my head and said, Lord, we have sinned. Praise <laughs> God. Because, and, and, and just one misreading of the scriptures. I am you begin to let it go wild in your mind and begin to manufacture sermons and teachings based on a false, um, wrong understanding. So, I, and, and that's, that's, that's the thing about working with the Lord. It must be precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little, there a little. You can't get this whole thing at once. So that's why God, you know, God allows us. He gives us that excuse. See? Because he knows we're still learning. But the problem is when truth comes, if you keep your mouth quiet, then you've accepted a lie. You know, the, the, the Lord began to teach me a lot of things and take him into deep truths about his person. And I remember, you know, one time I was fellowshipping with the Lord 
And because I always like to tell you the story behind it, so you know that this thing didn't just come like that. You know, so I, I was fellowship with him. Now he he had taught me a lot of things, and then he began to teach me the person of Jesus and his ministry to us. And so the Lord said something to me. He said, do you know if Adam and Eve had not sinned, Jesus still had a ministry? And then I thought, Is it, didn't he come because of our sins? The Lord said, no, he didn't come because of our sins. I said, no. What about the Lamb of God that was slain from the foundation of the earth? Why was the Lamb slain if he didn't have it in mind that we were going to sin? Now, I know a lot of you have these thoughts in your mind. Let me help you today. Why was the Lamb of God slain from the foundation of the world if God didn't have it in mind that Adam was going to be do wrong and so he would need a slain lamb to redeem mankind and the Lord said something that you know when the Lord tells you you want to prove him wrong <laughs> the Lord says there was no lamb that was slain from the foundation of the world I said no it's in the Bible the lamb was slain from the foundation the Lord said it's not in the Bible I say it's in the Bible he said it's not in the Bible I said Lord I know the scripture is in Revelation. <laughs> it's good. I, I'm telling you, literally, what I was doing with the Lord. So I said, let's go there. Let's go there. Chapter 13, book of Revelation. <laughs> Praise God. And verse 8. Now I wanted to show to the Lord that I know scriptures. So I said, okay, Lord, look at it. It says, and all they that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names were not written in the book of life of the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. I said, Lord, it is written, the lamb was slain from the foundation of the world. Then the Lord said to me, says, no, you're reading it wrong. Huh? See, he is wisdom. Now, I came to him with that confidence, say, ah, now, now, because uh, 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 you want to question, is it the Holy Spirit that I'm speaking, that is that is speaking to me or a demon have taken over? Because the Bible says even the devil has appeared unto as, as an angel of light. You see that now? And to many people, this has happened to them and they've just gone off. But so even when the Lord is there, you're, mm, 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 mm. no, you use your brain because you judge. If you are the type, mm, 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 I'm telling you the truth, Satan will come to you and the Lord will not stop him. Why won't the Lord stop Satan from coming? He will not. Read your Bible. Is there anyone that Satan has asked for permission to assess that God told him no? From Adam and Eve in that garden. Job. Jesus, name them, Peter, Jesus said, Peter, Peter, Simon, Simon, Satan has asked for permission and he wants to have it. This is his plan to sift you as wheat. He didn't say, but I have told God not to allow it. You know, I prayed for you that your faith should not fail when it happens. So don't think Satan cannot bring light to you. You know what I mean by light? What looks like light? So when you're hearing, even from the Spirit of God, you judge. Judge. So that's what I was doing with the Lord that day. I said, no, because he was opening my heart to something great. But I was like, uh -uh, uh -uh. I know this one. It is written. Now I see that that's how you resist the devil. Are you getting what I'm saying? When, now, if it was the devil that was speaking to me, he would have gotten stuck here. But because he's the one. Ah, he was just laughing at me. Praise God. He said, so when I said, the Lamb of God slain from the foundation, he says, you're reading it wrong. I said, how's it? Look at it. Verse 8, Revelation chapter 13. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him. That's that beast. Okay. Whose names are 
not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. And the Lord says, you are reading it wrong. So what's the right way to read it? And then the Lord said to me, it is not the Lamb that was slain from the foundation of the world. It is the book of life that was written from the foundation of the world. Oh. Oh. Hold on. There is the lamb slain, yeah? But not from the foundation of the world. The, from the foundation of the world was making reference to the book of life, not the lamb slain. Now, look at chapter 17, book of Revelation. Chapter 17, now it's easy to know. 13, 8, 17, 8, the same verse, 8, verse 8, verse 8, chapter 13, chapter 17. So look at chapter 17, verse 8. Now look at it, it says, The beast that thou sawest was and is not, and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit, and go into perdition, and they that dwell on the earth shall wonder whose names we are not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world when they behold the beast. Oh, okay. So the book of life was what he was making reference to from the foundation of the world. Wow. I became sober, like, <laughs> this is serious. Why is this serious? Because we have formed teachings based on the lamb that was slain from the foundation of the world. But there was no lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Now, I could relate with what he was saying because of several things he has taken me through. Several. Now, it begins to make sense. The contradictions in my heart begin to fade away. Because now, you're questioning why would God put that tree in the Garden of Eden and tell them not to eat it? And the Lord says, no, this was the plan. So it was the plan? Yeah. So why then was the lamb slain? The lamb was not slain. From the foundation of the world. The lamb was slain, but not from the foundation. Now, when you say from the foundation of the world, it means God has said it, that the lamb will be slain. From the foundation. Now, when he says from the foundation, that's a serious thing. It means from the foundation, of it has been ordained that man will go wrong. But then you begin to question the intent of God. Maybe you're just playing games with every one of us. And people have gone far to say, God already knows the bad I will do. He knows already. So why am I breaking my head? If I cannot help myself, I cannot help myself. And when I finish, I repent, I repent. No. No. So what would have been the ministry of Jesus if man had not sinned? Very simple. It was ordained from, for him from the foundation of the world to come and give man life which he still did. But now, because sin is in the picture, he had to save man from sin so that he can do his ministry. So the ministry of Jesus was not the earthly ministry that he did. I pray the Lord help you today. <laughs> oh Lord, why are we going into this? The ministry of Jesus was not, is not what you read in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. That one was, how do you put it now? Uh, that's the ministry of rescue. So that he can carry out his ministry. That's why he said, I came to the world. Now I go back to my father. To do what? That's why he prayed the prayer I prayed in John chapter 17. I need to show you that. Look at John, book of John, book of John, book of John. 
John, John, John. I told you I love John. Praise God. He is, he is my wonderful apostle. I love him. Look at this is Jesus praying, and this was the end of his, you know, earthly ministry, like we call it. The earthly ministry was ushering him. Now, here he was ushering himself into his real ministry. He says, Father, oh, oh let me start from verse 1. These words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy son, that thy son also may glorify thee. As thou hast given him power over all flesh. Take note of that. When was this power given to him over all flesh? From the foundation of the world. As thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. Did you see that? This is the ministry that he received from the foundation of the world. What was the ministry? His job in the creation of man is to give man eternal life. Now, I told you, this is not just studying. This is dealings and dealings with the Holy Spirit. I'm putting it to you in this manner because, you know, I look from here and it's a straight line. You understand what I'm talking about? So, now, thank you, Holy Spirit. You see, God said, let us make man in our image and after our likeness, right? So he made Adam. And the Bible said he breathed into him the breath of life and man became a living soul. Man was not complete. Adam and Eve were not complete yet. They were supposed to receive the ministry of Jesus. What was the ministry of Jesus? To give them eternal life. Only Jesus was appointed to do that. When? From the foundation. So this has nothing to do with his death. But he had to die to pay to purchase man who had gone, you know, it's it's like it's like you you were assigned to come and help someone and give the person something good. But when you showed up, you now realize this person has sold himself into slavery. Now, because the person is in slavery, you cannot give what you came to give the person. See? So what do you do? You say, you know what? I have to give you what I came to give you. But before I do, I have to pay to bring you out of slavery so that I will be able to perform my reason for coming. So you now go get money and work it out, do all your diplomacy, do whatever you have to do and get the person out of slavery. Now the person is so excited that he's out of from slavery that he forgets that there was something you came for. That's the life of a lot of believers. We are so happy that he has saved us from our sins that we forget that there is a ministry that he came to do in our lives. So here is it. As thou hast given him power over all flesh. Did you take note of that? Over all flesh. God gave him power over all flesh. That he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. It says, and this is life eternal. That they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. This is eternal life. That they might know him the only true god and jesus christ whom you have sent our time is up today praise god but you see this talk we're going to continue from here tomorrow <laughs> praise god don't miss tomorrow's meeting because you need to get the conclusion so you don't get confused father i pray that you release the spirit of understanding to everyone watching and listening 
Let them know and grow in this knowledge. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.